Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial we are going to be making a tumbler that I made for my daughter originally to match her book bag and I had so many requests for it way back when so let's get started. We are using pink pizzazz from the Flippin Awesome Paint Collection by Crystalac and one of their makeup brushes to apply it to our 24 ounce plump from the Steel Magnolia. Now, I really love this color, but we are going for a bright, bright, bright pink. So once I had this covered with pink pizzazz, I actually just tried to test out a spot using one of the Color Flex paints from Artistry and I ended up painting the whole tumbler. <laughs> and then I went back in and was like, you know, it would be really cool to add some dimension because I liked the two colors together then they all just sort of muddled together and I thought, no, it's going to be streaky now. So I ended up just blending the two colors together and whatever, I mean, it worked. <laughs> Sometimes I just let my mind wander away and I don't exactly know what I'm doing, but <laughs> we, we got a decent base for the glitter color that we was using. If you have a hot pink or a neon pink spray paint, use that. So I allowed that to dry for about two hours because there was a lot of paint on there at this point. And then I added on some of the Crystal Lac glitter glue to apply our glitter. I used the same makeup brush that I used to apply the paints to apply my glitter glue. It gives you really nice and even coverage, even if you're using something like Mod Podge or the Color Flex glue from Artistry. Using a makeup brush just gives you really nice and even streak-free coverage, and that's really what you're going to want whenever you're applying anything but a chunky glitter because you don't want your glitter to clump up in certain areas. This gorgeous pink that we are using is Valley Girl from PDB Creative Studio. And once our cup was covered, I allowed that to dry for about two hours and applied one good layer of Artistry's one-to-one -one ratio fast set. And while that was drying, I did find the original butterfly that I used, so I was really excited about that. It is just a free file that I found through a Google search, so I will link that down below for y'all. I resized it to two inches wide, and then I am just duplicating it into an infinite amount because we are going to need a lot of them to make our background for our mama decal. So I pulled some of them to the side, which really didn't matter in the end because I ended up adding a lot more. And since we are using the print to cut feature, the dimensions that you can go are 6.75 by 9.25. To make sure that we do not extend those boundaries to begin, I am going to add a shape and then resize it to 6.75 by 9.25. Right click on that and send it to the back so that we can add our butterflies on top to create our background for our mama decal. So we're going to take our butterflies and just arrange them in about an area that is 6.75 inches wide and about two and a half inches tall. I'm just clustering them in that area to make sure that there is no background space because once we flatten this if there is any space showing through and in this instance since we're putting it over the gray you will be able to see gray through the background if there's any of that left then that is going to cut white on our sheet and we want to fill this in with the colorful butterflies and i'll just let this play through so you can see how i arranged them
Once you have that area filled in, move over that little template and then you want to highlight your cluster of butterflies and flatten that. This means that it is not going to cut each individual butterfly out. It will cut the image as a whole now. My cluster ended up being about 6.8 inches, so I just highlighted it and then resized it to 6.75 to make sure that it would fit within the boundaries of my print to cut. So I put that back over our template and then I'm going to arrange as many of these butterflies on the top portion as possible. Once I have all of them on here, I will remove that background completely and then highlight everything and attach. You don't want to flatten. Flatten will cause it to actually not cut anything at all out because you are basically telling the program that that is one image. So you want to attach them so they all stay together where you are placing them and it will cut them all out individually. I did duplicate one last one and pull it to the side because we are going to need that to create our offset. I removed that background as I said, highlighted them and attached. This helps you save a tremendous amount of printable vinyl. For whatever reason, Cricut does not do a very good job on organizing or fitting as much on one sheet as possible. So I always do that myself so I can save on my paper. Now. I highlighted that little extra that we had, went up to offset and created an offset of 0 0.05. And then I'm going to duplicate that as many times as needed to have a background for each of those that I'm printing out. And because we created an offset of a print to cut image, we have to change that over to just cut. So I highlighted all of those butterfly offsets and then changed that to cut. I went over to add text and just typed in mama using a standard Cricut font, which was copper plate. And then I selected that little lock so I can unlock the dimensions and stretch that out to the way that I like. And I also moved the letters a little bit closer together by clicking that little arrow that is beside your font size. Once I had it the dimensions that I like, then I pulled it over to the butterfly cluster to make sure that it was going to fit on top. And then I also created a 0.05 offset for this one as well. Highlighted all of my cut images, made them the same color so they will all cut on the same sheet. And since we attached our images together, as you can see, it is going to fill that sheet all the way up. We're going to send that over to our printer. And when the screen pops up, make sure that little toggle button shows that your bleed is on. Once that prints, pop it onto an old or light grip cutting mat and allow your Cricut machine to cut those out on a regular vinyl setting. The principal vinyl that I'm using is Buttercrafts Matte Printable Vinyl. It's really thin and it cuts really well with my Cricut machine. If you have any trouble with your machine cutting properly, scroll back on my tutorials. I do have a video to help you calibrate your machine and a little bit extra or a few extra tips and tricks on print and cut. So I took my little cluster and I trimmed the edges so that I can align it on my mat. And then we are going to cut out our butterfly, our mama offsets, as well as that mama decal with the butterflies. And the reason that I had to do it this way instead of actually slice the mama decal out of that cluster in the Cricut program is because I already composed so many or clustered so many images together and I flattened it. It will not allow you to slice an image that way. So we, we print and cut first and then we cut our mama decal out of the cluster. 
I always seal my printable vinyl because if you don't, then it can cause micro bubbles since it's porous, it's vapor. So it definitely will cause those micro bubbles if you don't seal it in. It was pouring down rain outside and I couldn't use my typical Rust-Oleum matte clear spray paint. So I am using my ColorFlex glitter glue and just taking a small brush, brushing a thin layer over this. And then I immediately remove the background so that when our glue dries, it's not going to cause everything to stick together. And then we are gonna do the exact same thing with our butterflies. We're gonna allow that to dry completely. I did use my heat gun to speed up that process. If you do the same, just be really careful in applying too much heat so it doesn't overheat your vinyl and cause it to curl up. And then we're gonna take our butterflies, put them on our offsets. Now, if you have some transfer tape and it is not sticky at all, <laughs> just enough to lift these up, then you can do that. Um, but I really don't want a chance messing them up. They're so small and don't have really teeny elements on them. So it's easy just to pull them off and put them on myself without the use of the transfer tape. I cut out my mama offset and I'm going to apply that to my tumbler first before adding on those butterfly letters. And once that is on, I'm just going to very carefully remove the butterfly letters and apply them by hand. Again, you can use a very, I want to say dull, but not sticky um, piece of transfer tape to align these and put them on. I just don't want to take any chance at all of any of this image to lift up from my principal vinyl or the glue since I did use some glitter glue instead of the spray paint so i'm just going to apply them by hand just very carefully apply those to your offsets and if you make a mistake and put it in the wrong place that is totally fine just very gently lift this up printable vinyl is a little more delicate than your typical regular vinyl so you do have to be a little more careful when lifting it back up after you have already pressed it down Once you have your letters on, press them down really well so they won't lift when you add your epoxy and then add on your butterflies. I'm going to skip through this so my indecisiveness doesn't make you cringe. I don't even know if that's a word, but it's definitely a thing <laughs> when I am trying to put on some random decals. I can never make up my mind. So when you're applying them, Make sure that you are just very lightly pressing those down in the beginning because it's a very good chance you're going to have to remove one so you can rearrange. And then if there are any spaces or gaps down towards the bottom and top rim of your tumbler, you can just slice those butterflies and add them around the edge. I really do not like putting anything over the edge and since these have an offset and are layered, they are thicker and promise you, you are not going to want to pull any of this over the edge of your tumbler. It would definitely end up being a hot mess once you applied your epoxy. So after I got all my butterflies where I wanted them, I made sure that they were pressed down really well since I was just lightly applying them. And then I went in with one coat of Artistry's one-to-one -one ratio fast set. My room temperature is only 65 degrees and this epoxy dries incredibly fast. After 45 minutes, you can add on a second coat and it can be the regular epoxy. So what I did is one layer of Artistry's one-to-one -one ratio fast set, and then I added a final layer with their regular epoxy. You can use the fast set as a top coat. However, it is a little more costly, so if time allows, which normally it doesn't, 
<laughs> I do try to use the regular epoxy for my final layer. I think this tumbler turned out so beautiful. The vibrant colors from the butterflies, the valley girl glitter from PDB Creative Studio, holographic tech wrap craft final, and top it off with that gorgeous artistry shine just really makes this one stand out. As always, all of the materials that I used in this tutorial will be listed down below in the description, along with some coupon codes for you. Hop on over to Brittany Barnes Boutique on Instagram and join our Facebook group. We have lots of fun in both groups with additional tips and tricks and giveaways. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell in the corner to be notified every time a new tutorial drops. Thank you all so much and we will see you next time.